All right. Welcome back to another video, guys. In today's video, you know, this is a video that I've really been wanting to make for a very long time. You know, this is a video that I've really been thinking about for months now. You know, a lot of times, guys, in the background, even even though I'm not posting videos, <laughs> I'm, I'm still kind of thinking about videos. You know, I'm still writing down ideas. Sometimes I have thoughts. I have topics and things that just kind of that just kind of pop in my head, you know, and so. I have a whole database, you know, I have a whole database of just video topics, video ideas that I'm always writing about. And so this particular video has been a long time coming. Now, watch this entire video. I know a lot of I know a lot of you guys who have the attention span of a gnat. You know, I know you guys are watching shorts. You're on TikTok. That's all good. But make sure you watch this entire video. Share this video with people, you know, share it in discord servers, you know, because it's that important. So, you know, many times in the manosphere, in the red pill spaces, the, these these spaces, you often hear the advice of, you know, you got all the time in the world, bro. You know, the male advantage, you know, sacrifice your 20s, wait, <laughs> wait until your 30s. <laughs> and it almost sounds comical. You know, a lot of the a lot of the platitudes and the advice that goes around it is actually kind of funny, you know, because it's very oversimplified dumb down kind of low iq advice um so you know i really want to make this video because i feel that you know in the manosphere they always talk about you know oh bro men age like fine wine and they pull up a picture of some celebrity some rich hollywood <laughs> celebrity you know look at uh ryan goslin bro <laughs> right right bro keep coping you know and, you know, the reason why I want to make this video, because the problem with with lying to men is that when you lie to somebody, you're you're doing a disservice uh, to them. When you're a trusted resource, a trusted mentor and you lie to somebody, you are depriving them of the ability to make good life decisions. You know, many of us are, you know, the younger millennials, you know, I'm 31 years old, so I'm a younger millennial. I actually probably relate to Gen Z more than I relate to the oldest millennial. The oldest millennial, I think, is in their mid 40s, I think. And I relate more to Gen Z because I'm closer to that, to the to the age range of that. But, you know, we're the first generation that have been told, you know, men age like fine wine. Men don't have a wall. Uh, you know, men can have kids at any time, bro. But women, women have a clock. You know, sacrifice your 20s, wait until, <laughs> wait until your 30s to live it up. Then easily meet a girl who's 25 when you're 40, bro. You know, it, it's it's just advice like that. And we're the first generation to really be told this type of advice. We are the guinea pigs. You know, we're the first generation that will figure out, is this really true or not? You know, all the advice of, you know, don't get married young. Don't find a partner. Wait till you get older, blah, 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 blah. We're the first generation to really see is life going to really work out for most for most of us, you know. Um, so this video, I'm going to break it down. You know, we're going to we got a lot to talk about. OK, so listen to this entire video, guys. It's super important. Listen closely for all the guys who sit in the back. Move your asses up front today. You want to sit up front for this video. So. One of the things that's not often discussed is the biological clock of men and the, the biological clock for men is biological guys. Yes, it is. There is a technically a biological clock for men. We'll talk about that in a second. But there's also a more of a social cultural clock that impacts your future, you know, and I'll admit right off the bat, the clock for men is not the same. It's different, right? It's different. It's not to say men don't have a clock. It's a different type of clock. Right. You know, but we are on. We're, we're not that far off from women, guys. I know a lot of the people in the red <clears throat> in the red pill spaces in the manosphere will will lead you to believe that, you know, our clocks are just way different than women's. But nature didn't design us that way. Nature didn't design our clocks to be so different. You know, men and women are both designed to have kids relatively young you know and if you want kids it's up to you you know some people don't want kids whatever that's cool that's a that's a personal choice um 
But for men, I will admit, you know, the, the clock technically for men is more forgiving. Right. So, you know, instead of, you know, have you, you got to have a kid in your early 30s, you do have a little bit of lead way. We'll talk about that in a second, but not as much as you've been led to believe that, you know, oh, man, you can have look at Al Pacino, bro. You know, look at look at uh, Robert De Niro, you know. Um, so, you know. In this video, I want to give you a different perspective than the simplified. You got all the time in the world, bro. Before we jump into the video, another, you know, something I want to mention is that this is all being based on the precondition that you want kids and starting a family, you know, which 90 percent, 90 percent of people want kids. 90 percent of people want to have a family. Right. There are some people who don't want kids. And if that's the case, then, you know, some of this stuff isn't really pertaining to you. It doesn't it doesn't uh, pertain to you, you know. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about this. So the first aspect, guys, is that as men age. The genetic quality of your sperm decreases and this is scientifically proven. This is new science, guys. You know, back in the day, there was no studies being done on men. You know, there was mostly women because women carry kids. They're, they're the spotlight when it comes to reproduction. However, the quality of male of, of men, the quality of sperm deteriorates with age. And as time goes on, the, the potential of the issues of, of, of your child having issues like autism, um, basically psychological and neurological issues goes up and this is all science you know all of these things have been shown to have a correlation with the age of the father testosterone and fertility are two separate things a lot of people say oh well you know testosterone bro testosterone and fertility fertility are two different things so the point is is that both the parents ages factor into the child's well-being guys especially health you know maybe that's why you know <laughs> this is just kind of a, a a kind of side note but maybe that's why we see a lot of people these days have autisms and have have autism and they have all types of you know schizoid and bipolar all this stuff increases with the age of the father especially as we know People are waiting later to have kids. And I do think there is a genetic impact on kids. You know, the longer the parents wait to have their kids. Um, so, you know, this is something that you want to consider. You know, the kids have much higher chances of having issues, complications. Um, and this happens. This starts to happen as early as your early to mid 30s, guys. I'm not even talking about, you know, 40s, 50s. I'm talking about your early 30s. I think. Um, according to the research, I'll put some links in the description, male sperm quality peaks, the genetic quality peaks in your early 30s, guys. So and this is why I personally think and even still like you, you don't want to be an old father. You don't want to be 50 year or 55 years old and you're back and you got all types of issues, your your vitality, your 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 energy is low. You can't run around with kids. You know, you, you can't play and, and have fun with your kids the way you would if you had kids younger. So and this is something that this leads me to my next point is that all this advice about, you know, wait, you can have kids at any time. Wait until you get in your 30s, bro. All this, this and that. All of these things dismiss the potential well-being of the child. Now, you might say, well, Jack, what do you mean by that? The best environments for kids are two parents households. The best way to do this is to choose women or and for women to choose men and women to choose women who are closer in your to your age. This this has been all proven, statistically proven that, you know, people closer stats show that couples closer in age range are more likely to stay together. Now, women begin having issues at 35 to have kids. Right. We know this. All this points to the fact that it doesn't make sense as a man to wait until your 40s, late 40s, early 40s to have kids. It just doesn't make sense. Right. From a, from a nature perspective, it doesn't make sense. We know that women want men typically closer to their age range. So if you're 45, the chances of you meeting a woman who's 28 who wants to have kids with you are very, very low, guys. That it's just not in the cards. This is what I'm saying. A lot of this stuff is lies. A lot of this stuff, it sounds good on paper, 
because you look at celebrities like Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, all these people, and you say, oh, look at these guys, guys. You could do the same thing, too. No, these guys are Hollywood celebrities, guys. <laughs> you know, these aren't the normal people. But, you know, if you have a kid at 45, your kid, by the time your kid turns 20, dude, you're going to be a grandpa. You're going to be in your you're going to be in your mid 60s, bro. And who's to say you're going to live that long? Right. So now you have a young kid who's 20 years old without a father, right? Without a guidance. You died early. You kicked the can. You're gone or you're just too old. You're just too old to be really be like active in the child's life. Like you want to be able to relate in some way to your kids. I, I think parents being too old is an issue for kids. I think kids need their parents to be at least somewhat young you know so like if you're 35 and you have a kid then I think that sets you up in a good spot because you know 20 years from now as the kid is 20 you're still be, you'll be 55 right still not that still not that that young but not that old either and so when you really think about it it doesn't really make sense um you know, you want to be youthful. You want to you want to be able to run around with your kids. You, you, you want to you can't just rely on the oh, well, you know, bro, I'll just take good care of myself, bro. I'll just get get on TRT. Guys, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You can't cheat. You can't cheat nature. I tell you guys this all the time. You can't cheat the game. Nature will always win. You can try to use advancement with sci advancements in science. You can try to, you know, this and that. Oh, I'll just take good care of my guys. There are certain things you just can't fight. You can take the best care, the best self-care, you know, the best gym workouts, the best diets and still end up with cancer at 55. That's facts. I know, I know it's harsh, but it's facts, guys. So this is another point. You know, a lot of this this advice dismisses the well-being of child of, of kids. And, and we already know by stats, the older you wait to get to get to have kids or start a family, the less likely the chances of that family staying together, you know, the more likely you're going to, the kids are going to grow up in a split parent household, which again, dismisses the well being of the child, you know? Um, and this is a reason, and back to kind of like the sperm quality. If you look at most sperm banks, most sperm banks require the age limit is between 18 to 39. And that, there's a reason for that guys. There's a reason it's not 18 to 50, you know? Um, so the next point that I really want to talk about is the chances of meeting a psychologically healthy quality and viable partner decreases with age guys. Yes, this is true. You know, they, they make it sound like, oh bro, you can easily meet a woman who's 20, who's 25 when you're 40, dude, that that's just not true guys. That's just not true. And what you think? Oh, you think you're special? You think you're going to be the exception to the rule? Oh, well, I'll just be a millionaire, bro. Right, right. Keep telling yourself that, bro. And so, you know, again, the chances of meeting a psychologically healthy quality and viable partner decreases with age, guys. Women typically date men within their own their own age range. I don't care how much the manosphere wants to cope and tell people, oh, you know, it's not true, guys. Women love older men, guys. When, they, when women say they, when women like older men, we're talking four years, four years plus or minus guys. So yes, you have your exception of a girl who has some type of, you know, daddy issues or some type of issues or she, or she's a gold digger or whatever. And she's looking to be with an older rich man, but the average woman is not looking for an older guy, not, not in the way the manosphere and these people like to present it. So if you wait until 35 plus to start thinking about a family it's kind of too late, guys. I know that's kind of crazy, but it is. Um, it's going to be much harder, you know, because, you know, when you're 35, you're going to have to kind of rush it. Right. Because you got to factor in, OK, the time frame of the woman, you know, then you got to factor in, OK, am I ready? Are you financially ready? Like, guys, it's a lot that goes into it. It's not just like, oh, I'm 40 years old. I can just pop out a kid. It, it doesn't it, it's not that simple. It, it's really not that simple. And I see so many guys being delusional thinking that they have forever they think they have forever right so the chances of you dating a woman who's 15 years younger than you is extremely slim guys even 10 years like you know if you're 40 years old and you want kids 
the women who are in their late 30s are already kind of eliminated. So you're already dealing with now. OK, now you got to go younger. So now you're talking women who are in their early 30s. So now you're talking a 10 year difference. So if you're 40, you're going to have to meet a woman who's like 30, <laughs> you know, so now you're talking 10 years different. But now but we know statistically the likelihood of that is just not it's not realistic. You can't bank on that. You see? Now, yes, you can. A lot of people say, oh, you can you can just get your passport, bro, and go to a different country. Yeah, there, there's loopholes and ways around it. But I'm I'm speaking generally here, guys. You know, of course, there are always going to be those couple of exceptions. Right. Um, But like I said, women typically date within their age range. So as you get older, your dating pool. Here, this is important, guys. Listen, listen to this. As you get older, your dating pool won't necessarily expand, but it will change. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, guys, listen, as you get older, it will get more difficult to find partners who are who are non jaded. And I'm talking about men and women, guys. I'm not just talking about women. There are men too. men as a man. If you stay in the dating game too long, you will end up jaded, bitter. Um, you will end up kind of the, the female, the, the 35 year old jaded female version of a man. That's what you'll end up as guys, you know? So I'm talking about men and women. I'm not just talking about women here. Okay. So the chances of meeting that goes down drastically, guys, women aren't, aren't necessarily dating older like they used to because they don't need to, right? You can have all the resources in the world. It doesn't really matter, guys. It, it doesn't matter these days. We're not in the stone ages, right? But again, guys, as you get older, your date, your dating pool will actually decrease. It will decrease, not expand, right? I think that I will say this. There is a sweet spot. I think late 20s is your sweet spot because in your late 20s, you can kind of date women who are in their early 20s and you can date women who are in their late 20s plus women who are slightly older. So I would say from like from like 33 to like 26 is like a really good sweet spot. But after that, your dating options will drastically decrease because, again, like I said, the pool, especially it, it depends on what you're looking for. Right. If you're just looking for hookups, whatever. That's fine. But I'm talking about the fact that most people want families. So if you want a viable partner, as you get older, the chances will drastically decrease year by year, month by month, day by day. And even from an anecdotal experience, you know, most of the women who I know, the, the couples who I know who are in the best relationships typically have they met when they were young and when i say young i'm not talking about teenagers or like early 20s typically either mid to late 20s that's typically when people pair up and have the best relationships where the couple both partners are still young you know they can still have they got a couple years they still got five years to really vet each other to really date etc so you know and that's another factor guys vetting it takes time to vet you can't just be like okay i'm 37 i want to meet somebody i want a kid i want to have a kid quickly like you, you gotta it takes one to two years maybe even three years to vet to see if this woman or man is going to be a good mother or a good parent or a good father that stuff takes time you can't just snap your fingers like thanos and make that. And another thing is age you know you're you, you're not you can't run from the clock guys you can't run from nature. You're going to start looking older. I don't care how good your skincare routine is. You know, the average person doesn't have the genetics to look extremely youthful into their 30s. You are going to start to age your body. You'll start to kind of have aches and, and pains. OK, you can go to the gym. You can do all this stuff. None of that stuff is going to stop. None of that stuff is going to stop father time, guys. OK, Um. So, again, you know, the relatability factor, you know, a lot of times if you're a 40 year old man and you say, oh, I want to meet a woman who's who's 25, there's a relatability factor, guys. And what I mean by that is dating someone who is in a completely different generation than you is a, it, it's a, you, it, it kind of it kind of impacts the compatibility because you just can't relate. You know, it's like being with a child almost. If you're if you're an older millennial and you try to date a younger Gen Z woman, 
especially in today's world, it's just not going to work out well. It's, it's, it's just not because there's a there's a relatability factor when it comes to compatibility, guys. OK, so that's another factor. Right. So you see all of these things are super important. So there's a lot of factors to it, guys. And another thing is being single. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go out on the limb here and say something. I actually think that women are actually better at being single than men. Yes, I, I said it. I said it. I said it. I think women are better at being single than men. Women are often given a lot of social support. You know, if a woman's crying, you know, the whole world will come to, to try to save her. And I'm not saying this in a, a negative way. I'm just spitting facts. Right. So, you know, th this is what happens as a man. Nobody really cares about you that like nobody cares. You know, you, you don't have that same social support that women have. Women get constant invites. They get constant, constantly included on things. Right. So I personally think women are better at being single. I, I think men actually need relationships more than women. In fact, and I know that's kind of out in the limb there, but this is something that I've observed in society. This is something I've seen. Right. Um, I'm talking about the average guy. Right. So I'm not talking about exceptions to the rules. And so another thing that I want to point out, guys, is the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost. And this is kind of something I spoke on this a few minutes ago. As you get older, guys, opportunities will be gone. There are certain things in life, guys, that you just can't get back. There are certain things in life there are certain that you just can't get back. You know, you can do all the self-improvement work. You can do all the, you know, oh, I'm working on myself, bro. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But guys, there's just things that you just can't get back. You know, in college, I know a lot of people say, oh, college isn't the best time. Guys, college is the I don't care what you say. I don't care what people say. College is the most socially vibrant time in your life. Now, whether you participate, that is up to you. However, that doesn't dismiss the fact that this is the most socially vibrant time. OK, so again, opportunity costs. As you get older, you won't have those same opportunities. People tell you, oh, sacrifice your 20s, bro. Things will just be magically waiting for you. Everything you paused will just be waiting for you when you when you get in your 30s. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, life doesn't work that way. There's an there's an opportunity cost, guys, for everything in life. The, the, the things you miss out on and you sacrifice, sometimes you won't be able to get those things back. You can try. You can try to be a 35 year old pretending like you're 25. It, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Your brain, your body, your the things you want, everything changes. Everything moves. Time, you can't stop time. You can self-improve all you want to. You can start all the businesses you want to. You can make all the money you want to, but you can't stop time. And opportunities flow with time. So that's another something else to realize, guys, is the whole male advantage thing. You can't see there's there's chapters in life, guys. And this is something I want to talk about, you know, the sacrifice your 20s, sacrifice your 20s and wait until your the male advantage. It doesn't work that way. It, it just simply does not work that way, guys. There's stages in life. You know, I, I talked about this the other day. As you turn, as you get older, the things you want will change. The things you want in life will change. This is why the whole sacrifice your 20s doesn't make sense. Your your 20s are meant to be your 20s, your, especially your early 20s. Your early 20s, you're going to want, want certain things that you're not going to want at 30 at 31. Even though now at 31 years old, could I go out and get laid? Sure. Do I want to? Not really. I don't really care that much because I have other focuses. Now, yes, I still date, whatever. I'm not saying I just completely have, have stopped dating or anything. It's just not as high a priority as it was in my twenties, you know? So if you skip out on all those experiences, you are going to be extremely underdeveloped guys. If you skip out on the socializing, if you skip out on the college and participating in clubs and sports and intramur in and all that stuff, you're, you're going to be way behind guys. You can't just snap your finger and make up for lost time. It doesn't work that way. Lost time is lost time that you can never get back. You can never recreate the same experiences twice. Damn. I hope y'all listening. 
I hope you guys are listening. This stuff is super important. Um, this is why I, I told you guys, you need to honor the stage of life you're in. Whatever stage of life you're in right now, honor that phase, honor that phase. You know, whatever chapter you're in, that chapter is a chapter for a reason. One day the chapter will come to an end and it's time to move on to a different chapter. You know, life is meant to go. You're meant to go through certain chapters properly. Right. If you skip out on certain chapters of life, you risk the, the to being underdeveloped. This is what happened in childhood. Certain kids grow up and they miss out on certain experiences and you pay for it later on in life. Because you got to go through there's certain passages in life that you have to go through properly. You got to go through it. Like I can tell you, hey, man, you know, getting laid is overrated. Right. But like, OK, you know, but you got to go through it. This is something you have to go through. There's passages, you know, sacrifice your 20s, bro. It's it just you're going to miss out on so many opportunities and experiences. That you're just not going to become a well-adjusted person. That's a simple way to put it. It's about becoming a well-adjusted person. You know, all these guys who tell you to, you know, isolate yourself in your 20s, you know, stack your money up, bro. Wait till your 30s and hope that everything just comes together. <laughs> and this is this is banking on the fact that hopefully things do work out, which we know statistically life. Most in most cases, life does not work out the way we want it to work out, guys, <laughs> where I thought, you know, at 31 now. I'm in a completely different place than I thought I would be. I'm not in a bad place, but it's a different place than I thought I would be, you know, when I was in my early 20s, guys. So we know, statistically speaking, the average person is not going to be the next Jeff Bezos. You're not going to be a millionaire. You're not going to be the next, um, you know, t mega influencer. Right. So it's really a fantasy. It, it really all it really is all a fantasy. And you could potentially waste years of your life. In fantasy land, guys. Um, and this is why I don't agree with the whole, you know, become 40 year, become 40 years old in your 20s, bro. You know, the, the male advantage, the whole male advantage thing operates on the reverse, basically the reverse of the progression bias. It assumes that what you think you want now, you will want in the future. So if you think about sacrificing now, your, your early 20s, whatever, it assumes that you could just press pause on your psychological development, on your spiritual development, on life. You could just press pause and, and get everything you want now later. But I'm, I'm here to tell you and bust your bubble. Life doesn't work that way. This is not true. And so if that's the case, what the hell are you sacrificing for? You know, what, what are you what are you sacrificing for exactly? For what? To, to be like, oh, look at those guys, man. I'm better than those people. Yeah. OK. Keep keep telling yourself that, buddy. <laughs> becoming becoming 40 years old in your 20s will lead you to being 20 year old, 20 years old when you turn 40. <laughs> I'm going to say this again for the guys in the back. Becoming 40 in your 20s will lead to you becoming a 20 in your 40s or 20 when you become 40. Midlife crisis is you're acting like a damn jackass at 40 years old. You, you're too old, bro. Like you're just too old to be acting like that. You too old to be out here trying to have rotations and shit, bro. Nobody got time for that. Nobody got time to be running around like a fucking 23 year old at 40. Oh, you're going to be Dan Bilzerian. You're going to be the next playboy. <laughs> and so with that being said, the only sound advice from all of this is you, you don't want to get married too early. I do agree with that. Like you don't want to settle down and have a family too early technically. Right. So like, if you're, you know, if you're 19 years old and you say, I want to have, you know, for a fact, okay, I do want to have kids. Okay. It is a little bit too early. You don't want, you don't want to, you don't want to cash in too early. Right. But you don't have all the time in the world, guys. We, you don't, I'm here to tell you this guy, this is something I'm, I'm starting to, you know, as I get older, I'm starting to come into term. I'm starting to come to terms with my own mortality. I'm starting to come to terms with that. Like, you know, dude, I'm 31 years old, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, 30 more years, I'm going to be 61. Right. I'm going to be like a basically a grandfather age at, at 61. Male, again, male life expectancy is only to 73, guys. And that's the average. That's the average, guys. You know, so you, you really don't have as much time. You know, these last 30 years went by so fast. You know, half of that is already dedicated to childhood, teenage years, 
you know? So you really only get like, you know, when you turn 18, that's kind of like the start of your life where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of growing up as a, as an individual adult now. Right. So you really half of your life, the first 18 years is already cashed out. <laughs> it's already cashed out. So you actually you really don't have that much time guys. You know, you really don't. Um, so yeah, man, that's kind of it guys. The age pill is real. The, the whole purpose of this video is to let you guys know that the age pill is real. You know, I don't care what people tell you as a man, your value will technically decrease over time, guys. I know that sounds kind of crazy. It's contrary to popular belief. But as you get older, your value as a man will decline. There is a sweet spot, you know, in your late 20s, even your early 30s, like, you know, 33 to like 26. There is a sweet spot. And I do think you can capitalize on that sweet spot. Right. You can you can cash in at that time and, and actually get a really good a good situation for yourself, you know, especially if you want a family. Again, if you don't want a family and kids not talking to you. Right. So but the longer you wait after that point, after like your your mid early 30s, like 33, it just gets harder and harder. The likelihood goes down and down and down. And it's just it's just it's just it's just not going to be a good situation. It's not going to end up well for you. OK. Um, so anyway, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. I really wanted to make this video on the male biological clock, guys. Um, you know, you don't have as much time as you think, guys. Seize the day. Live your life. You don't wait until, oh, I'm going to sacrifice and wait until my, th no, live life now, guys. You know, you're going to die. We're all, we're all going to die one day, man. And, and as you get older, you, you start to like really come to terms. In your 20s, you kind of feel invincible. You know, you feel like you're never going to die. <laughs> You know, I felt this way, too. Like at, at 25, I never thought I would turn 30. Like, I, I don't know why, but it just feels like you're never going to you're never going to get old, you know, but you will, guys. And time. Time, time waits for no one. Time doesn't slow down, doesn't speed up. You can't press pause on life. You can't press pause on experiences. You just can't, guys. So anyway, that is it for today's video, guys. I will see you in the next one.